We're tired of you stripping away the voice of the church. We're tired and we're not going to take it anymore because we don't have to take it anymore because we're making an appeal to God. We are taking this to the highest court. You see, the highest court isn't the Supreme Court. No, the highest court is the court of God. And that accuser, he's been up there trying to prosecute us. He's been up there making accusations against us day and night before God. But God's raising an army right now. I want to back up just a little bit. You see, I learned this bit of history from a prophet, a modern-day prophet, an apostle, Dutch Sheets. And it's not even from a recent message. God allowed me to hear a message that Dutch Sheets brought forth in 2014 where he shared this. And I wasn't prepared to hear it in 2014 because it wasn't time for me to hear it. But the time is now. And that message that he brought is, is now. And Dutch shared a dream, not that he had, but a dream that Julie Meyer had. And Julie Meyer is a, a wonderful intercessor. She works in the, in the uh, prophetic field. And she's at the International House of Prayer. And in this dream, Julie saw seven ambulances. And in the back of these seven ambulances were seven people laying on stretchers. And there were paramedics working on them. But these paramedics weren't earthly paramedics. They were angels. And each paramedic started yelling. Each angel started saying, There's no heartbeat. There's no heartbeat. There's no heartbeat. And then another one said, it's the intercessors. It's the intercessors. See, intercession has moved out of our churches. Many people see it as a thing of the past. Now we're all into Bible studies, and studying the Bible is wonderful, and we should do it. It's how we're fed. That's how we recognize our calling. But you see, intercession is important. So intercessors, it's time to arise. It's time to get back in your war rooms. It's time to cry out to God and it's time for us to join corporately in a time of repentance for our nation, for the offenses. It was 1973 when the death covenant was established allowing abortion to be legalized. And for 40 years we were under judgment for that. But in 2003, God said judgment's filled. And yeah, we still have abortion because God doesn't have to wait on the sin to stop. He just has to have enough people repenting. So what other offenses are there that are blocking movements? What, what do we need to corporately repent over for our nation? You know, I think... In my heart, I hear Holy Spirit saying the feminism movement is one that we need to repent over because it's gotten us out of order. God is a God of order. He is to be our head. And then our husbands. And then us. We come under the covering of our husband. It doesn't mean our husband is a Lord over us. It doesn't mean he has this great authority over us. It means he's our one of our protectors. He's somebody God has given us to protect us. And that's why we're under his covering. But the feminism movement has tried to place women above the man. And we're out of order. And we can't mess up God's order. Because when we do things fall apart. If we want to bring healing to our land, we've got to, with God's help, restore order. And the way we get God's help is to repent. And see, when we get back in our holy spaces as wives under our husband's covering, then we join together. We partner with our husband and we create this umbrella of protection 
over our children. But when we're out of order, then our children aren't properly protected. They're exposed. They're exposed to the enemy. But we can right this breach. We can build a bridge that repairs this breach through corporately joining together in a prayer of repentance and for asking God to heal our timeline, to heal our land. In this dream, another angel shouts, I found a heartbeat. I have found it. I've got a heartbeat. It's faint, but I've got one. And the other angels ask, how? What did you do? What did you do to bring back the heartbeat? And the angel says, I began to tell the stories of old. Tell the stories of the past great awakenings. Tell the stories from 1906, from 1915, from 1930, 1940, 1950, 1960. I began to tell stories of how God was healing and saving and it revived the heart. The angel said, tell the people to go back and tell the stories. But not only tell the stories from the past, but to insert themselves in the storyline, just as I've been doing. You see, I shared with you how April 9th, 2016 marks the 110th year anniversary of the Azusa Street Revival, which was the great revival that began in Los Angeles in 1906 with William J. Seymour. But you see, there was a revival before that one in Wales. And another man, and his name slips me, I'm sorry, uh, Jane, John Bartleman, I think. He was a Bartleman. I'm not 100% on his first name without looking it back up. I'm sorry. But he wrote to Robert Evans, who was the evangelist in Wales, and he said, what do we do? How do we get God to move like that here? And Robert Evans said to him that we are to congregate the people who are willing to make a total surrender. Pray and wait. Believe God's promises. Hold daily meetings. And may God bless you as my earnest prayer. And these men in Los Angeles, they, they followed those instructions to the letter. And somebody went and got uh, William J. Seymour from Texas and had him come because he'd been teaching in Texas on receiving the Holy Ghost although he hadn't experienced it yet himself. And they had him come to Los Angeles. And they opened the doors of the church and they had him teaching in the church. And then he went for his next meeting, the next time he was to teach in the church. And when he got to the church, he found the doors padlocked. They were padlocked. The church elders were rejecting his message because he had not yet experienced it. But you see the congregation, they weren't all in agreement with those church elders. And so some of them were hungry and they wanted to know more about what he was teaching. And so they invited him to come stay with them and they began to hold prayer meetings and they began to listen as he shared these teachings. And they began to put action to their faith. And they began to be filled with the Holy Spirit and through this was birthed the Great Azusa Street Revival, which ran through 1915 and moved. It wasn't just held there in Los Angeles. It spread like a wildfire from Los Angeles to Chicago. It spread. And you see, then there was a hundred-year prophecy. The Great Azusa Street Awakening which over the years resulted in 600 million being swept into the kingdom of God and gave birth to the Pentecostal movement. 
that had a prophecy during this time that was given by William J. Seymour and by Maria Woodward Eder. Um, and what they said, and I'm just, I'm going to sum up this prophecy rather than read the whole thing, but the prophecy that was given said, within a hundred years, there is going to be a bigger awakening, an even greater awakening than this one. And we're at the 110th anniversary, and I believe it is for such a time as now. It's within that hundred years. So we went over by about 10 years. That's okay, because God, God does things when he wants to. And you see, it's significant that it's 10 years after that hundred years, because this year is a year of jubilee, is a year of restoration. A jubilee year is a year that we get back the things that the enemy has stolen from us and we get it back with interest. He doesn't get to keep it. He has to return it with interest. Because that's how God works. No longer do we walk under the curse. Now we walk under abundant blessings. And it's for such a time as now. So we insert ourselves into this storyline and we say, thank you, William J. Seymour. Thank you, Maria Woodward Eder. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your prophecy. And we're joining in agreement with your prayers because although you may have passed over into eternity with God, your prayers are still alive and we can still agree with them because we know that there is synergy in agreement. There is power in agreement because Paul taught us that, and Jesus did, that where two or three are gathered together, Jesus is in their midst first and foremost, but where two or three come together in agreement, asking anything, it shall be given by his Father who is in heaven. And we know from, from the beginning, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the word, or earth. He spoke things into existence and his words don't return to him void. And he gave us creation power through our words. And we know that because Proverbs teaches us that we hold the power of death and life in the tongue. And so their prayers are still alive. The prayers from a hundred years ago are still alive and still echoing through space and still reaching God's ear. And so when we join into agreement with them, they are multiplied and their power is multiplied. And it is now that we have this greater awakening. It is now. This is why you're called out of your introversion and the extrovert in you is being awakened because it is now for us to join together to corporately repent, to corporately go to the Supreme Court of God and appeal to Him and appeal to Him. You are intercessors. Now I want to talk to you just a minute. You know, there's a big divorce rate in this country because the enemy wants to tear down families because there's strength in families. Because families that pray together stay together. And not only that, but those families come to agreement together. Where two or more are joined together in agreement, asking anything, it shall be given in heaven. So the enemy fights really hard to tear apart families. Now, I don't mention divorce in a negative light, but I do it because we can learn something from it. Because you see, in families that have divorce, that have children, when they appeal to the court for their divorce, the court appoints a guardian ad litem to speak for the children, to say what's in the best interest of the children. 
Is it in the best interest for the parents to have shared custody? Is it in the best interest for one to be the custodial parent, the other one to have some visitation, maybe even some supervised visitation or no visitation at all? The guardian at litem spends time with both parents in their separate homes, evaluates the home to see if it's ready for the child. Is it, is it safe for the child? Is the child going to be covered and protected in this home? As intercessors, we're the guardian ad litem. So we're appealing to God and we're saying, you know, this land needs to be healed. There was a breach. There was an offense back here that occurred. And it's caused division. And it's caused hurt and deep soul wounds. And it needs to be healed. So we're appealing to you, our everlasting God, who knows the end from the beginning. We're appealing to you to heal our timeline so that curses and death aren't passed down to the third and fourth generation but your abundant life and your blessings are passed down to the third and fourth and fifth and sixth and seventh and eighth and ninth and tenth and eleventh and twelfth and so on generations that's you're the guardian of litem as an intercessor so what I want us to do in this group, introversion, coming out of your shell, is to step forth out of our shell now. It's time. It's time. And I want us to join together to corporately pray. To corporately pray before the heavenly justice system for our nations. And I, I say nations, plural, because although there's only about 20 of us in this group, we have three nations that I know of represented here. We have the nation of America, we have the nation of England, and we have the nation of Nigeria. All of these are represented right here. And I want us to join together to pray for our nations. And as God brings healing to our nations, we are going to disciple other nations. I shared with you how God had birthed a radio broadcast for me, a weekly syndication through satellite radio. And I've learned through feedback from those that have listened to the broadcast that my voice has reached as far as Germany. I can't begin to tell you how overwhelming that is. My feet haven't left American soil, but my voice has been heard in Germany, in Canada, in England, in Nigeria. But it's not about me. It's about God. It's about His plan. It's about multiplying His kingdom. It's never about me. But it's so overwhelming when he allows me to see what he's doing through me, one individual. He's multiplied the territory that I'm speaking to without me ever having to leave home. And if he'll do it for me, he'll do it for you. See, I don't share this to build myself up, but I share this to say whatever he does for me, he'll do for you. He'll increase your borders because it's about him and it's about multiplying his kingdom. It says, Jesus prayed, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We have a job to restore the earth to the way it was created. 
Our job is to bring healing 